How many amazing 24 to 70 2.8 zooms can the world use? Apparently one more than I thought. Welcome back to Overexposed, your place for spicy camera reviews and bad pics. Today, I have a lens that needs no introduction. I have the Sony 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 version two lens. It's a lens that just recently came out and I would like to thank myself for sending this lens to myself. Unfortunately, with less than a thousand subscribers, the working man has to buy his own lenses here. But it's okay, I got the lens earlier today and I've already had it out and shooting it. So let's take everything out of the box before we get into some real world testing. Fancy, fancy. Like all of Sony's investment class lenses, it comes with a really nice neoprene nylon carrying case, so that's super cool. And inside, I've already taken the plastic baggies and stuff off. Spoiler alert, I've already been shooting it. The lens has some heft to it. If you've watched this channel any at all, you know that I probably have a preference for prime lenses. I think that's pretty obvious. While this isn't the first 24 to 70 millimeter lens that I've owned, it's the first one that's really caught my eye and looks like one that I could add to my kit and use on a regular basis. And we're gonna get into those reasons why as we go throughout the review. But that's what's inside the box. Nylon case, the latest and greatest in Sony glass, and a packet of papers towards the bottom, which I assume are my warranty papers and whatnot. Yes, limited warranty, all this stuff. So definitely something you're gonna wanna hang on to. But I say we put the cardboard and all the stuff away and let's see how good this lens really is. So I decided to take this lens to a, a, a small trail near my house just to kind of put it through its paces. I'm familiar with a lot of the shots there. It's nothing too fancy, but it offers a wide variety of shooting scenarios that'll allow me to check out some of the features of the lens. And as we go, I'm gonna get my laptop out and I'm gonna show you some comparisons. And the Sony 24 70 wasn't the only lens I took with me. I also shot my Sony 24 G Master to test against the 24 70 282 at the wide end. And then I also used my Sigma 85 14 DGDN lens to compare against the longer end of the 24 70. So those really high quality, exceptional prime lenses are going to be the lenses that I'm gonna be comparing the 24 70 lens against. So it'll be interesting to see if the 24 70 can keep up with those high quality prime lenses. But I'm gonna get my laptop so we can do those comparisons. So I wanted to put the lens through some real world testing. So let's take a look at the comparison. For the first shot, it's just a really simple composition. The trail leading off into the distance, winding around the corner. Nothing too fancy, just a nice shot to kind of test the resolution of the lenses here. So let's start by checking the center resolution. And we have the Sony 24 to 70 on the left and the Sony 24 1.4 on the right. And this first comparison is at f2.8. It looks like at least to me that the Sony 24 to 70 has the resolution edge here at least when it comes to center sharpness. I'm looking at the detail in this tree, the foliage in the background there. The Sony 24 to 70 looks like it's the resolution leader, which is surprising. Looking in the corners here, at least to me, it looks like the Sony 24 1.4 over here is slightly sharper in the corners, especially when you zoom in. Yeah, it's really, really sharp there. And looking in the extreme corners, it's hard to tell much of a difference between the two, but looking at this tree right here and some of the leaves on the ground here, just the 24 to 70 looks just, just much nicer. So at least for the first set of images here, the Sony 24 to 70 looks better in the center and in the extreme corners with the 24 1.4 looking better in the corners. Moving on to F4, once again, and we have a cyclist uh, creeping through the image here, but at least here, it looks like, once again, the Sony 24 to 70 has the slot resolution edge over the 2414 GM. As we move to the corners, it looks like maybe the gap is closed a little bit, but still, you can look at these leaves over here and, and some, of the, some of the leaves here, and the Sony 2414 is just brutally sharp in the corners. And looking down in the extreme corners again, uh, uh, again, hard to separate the two images, but to my eye, it looks like, at least in this fern, and the leaves on the ground here. It looks like the Sony 24 to 70 has a resolution edge in the corners. So once again, the pattern holds slot advantage in the center and the extreme corners with a pretty considerable advantage for the Sony 24 1.4 in the corners. So um, an interesting pattern here taking shape. Moving on to F5.6. Notice between 2.8 and 5.6 that we have lost some vignetting. At F2.8, there is some vignetting in the corners. So at 5.6 in the center, brutal, brutal sharpness here from the Sony 24 to 70. That tree back in the, the back is slightly sharper. This tree over here, it looks to, at least to my eye, to be sharper. 
So again, in the center, the Sony 24 to 70 just insanely sharp. In the corner, the Sony 24 to 70 looks like it's catching up some with the 2414. And then in the extreme corners, there isn't much between the two lenses in this this frame. It does look to me that there is a little more clarity with the leaves that are on the ground here. So it looks like the Sony 24 to 70 does actually have a slight advantage. And the last comparison I prepared here was at F16. Looking at F16, it looks like there's been a general loss of sharpness between both lenses. Again, with the uh, 24 to 70 looking really good, the 2414 looking pretty good too, but generally just not as sharp as they were at F4 and 5.6. In the corners, a uh, very similar performance between the two here. The ground looks sharper on the 2414, but there isn't as big a gap between the 24 to 70 and the 2414. In the extreme corners here, it looks like the 2414 has surpassed the 24 to 70 finally. What does that tell us? At least at 24 millimeters, comparing the Sony 2414 to the Sony 24 to 70, at 24 millimeters, the Sony 24 to 70 often outpaces the prime lens, and it's a really, really good performer. So. Uh, you know, I've shot the Sony 2414 for years. It's an exceptional lens. I love it. It's been in my bag for a really long time. But the Sony 24 to 70, at least at the apertures that it has, it is every bit its equal. If you need f1.4, the Sony lens is probably your only option. Don't need the extra light gathering capability from the from those faster prime lenses. The Sony 24 to 70 looks to be a really good option. All right, so moving on to my second comparison, and that is at the longer end. And I'm going to be comparing the Sony 24 to 70 all the way zoomed out, 70 millimeters, comparing it to the 85-1.4 lens. This is the Sigma Art 85 millimeter 1.4 DGD in lens. So a really, really good performing lens. I'm interested to see how the 24-70 stacks up. So we're gonna start the two lenses at 2.8. You'll see there's a slight crop difference between the two images here. Again, it's a 70 millimeter lens versus an 85 millimeter lens. So but we ain't too worried about it. All right, guys, at 2.8, it looks like the 85-1.4. All right, guys, at 2.8, it looks like the Sigma 85-1.4 Art is a cut above. It looks like it is just a little bit sharper. Um, I'm looking at this tree here, and I just see so much detail resolved in those two trees. Um, and, and that's not to say these are the resolution's bad in the 24-70, but this is, this is really extremely nice resolution over here. Looking in the corners, and we're gonna run into bokeh problems here, guys. I'm just gonna warn you. It's hard to make much out of that. And then in the extreme corner, uh, more bokeh. One of them's busier, maybe the 85-1.4, maybe that's a little softer. Uh, it's, hard to t it's hard to make much out of those two shots. So moving on to F4, going back to those same trees. Again, I'm looking at the ground here on the 85-1.4 image, and it's just brutally sharp. They're both really, really good performers here. Um, I don't think you'd be dissatisfied with the quality of either lens. But again, I'm looking at these trees, the 24 to 70 is just, just lagging slightly behind the 85-1.4. Looking in the corners here, again, a lot of bokeh, not much to talk about there. Next set of comparison shots at f5.6. And here, it looks like the Sony 24 to 70 has caught up with the resolution of the 85-1.4. The 24 to 70 has maybe exceeded the resolution of the 85-1.4 at this point. I'm looking at the detail on the ground, um, this looks like a little better performance from the 24 to 70, so that's a really nice shot. So I think by, by 5.6, the uh, 24 to 70 has surpassed the 1.4. And then the extreme corners, again, uh, not much, not much to talk about there. So guys, what does this tell us about shooting at 70 millimeters on this new Sony 24 to 70 lens? Really good resolution, lags behind the latest generation of primes just a little bit. That's okay because it still performs really well. It achieves a high level of sharpness, even if it's not the blisteringly high resolution of the uh, Sigma 85 1.4. Another thing I wanted to take a look at was the close focusing ability of this lens. I, I use my Sony 24-1.4 as almost a macro lens. It's not, not really a macro lens, but it's the closest focusing lens that I've got. So I was, I was excited to see how close the new Sony 24-70 could focus. And I, took a couple shot, and I took a couple shots here comparing the two to show you guys the difference between the two. And if you take a look at the two images that I've got posted on the screen, you are able to focus a lot closer I mean, you're going to be able to zoom right in on the bride's nose hairs with this lens. You can see between these, you can see between these two images that you can focus a little closer with the Sony 24 to 70 2.8. The minimum focusing distance on the new Sony 24 to 70 2.8 is a mere eight inches, um, so you're able to focus really closely. While I was here, I thought it would be a good time. While I was here, I thought it would be a good time to try to test the focus breathing of the two lenses, and you can see that comparison here. 
to my eye, it looks like the Sony 24 to 70 2.8 doesn't focus breathe as badly as the Sony 2414. The Sony 2414 admittedly has a problem focus breathing. If you don't know what focus breathing is, focus breathing is when a lens changes focal length slightly when it zooms. It's an optical defect that yields some undesirable results, especially when shooting video. The new Sony 24, it looks like to me that the new Sony 24 to 72 is much better with this. All right guys, here's the vlogging test. I'm holding the camera by the end of the lens. It's definitely a lot bigger and heavier than the 24-14 that I usually use, but um, it, you can use it for vlogging. It's just gonna require a little bit more effort. You're not gonna get the depth of field that you get with the 1.4 from the, from the 24 that I use, but the lens feels good. It's not too heavy, but I will say this, um, you're not gonna wanna carry this thing around all day and vlog with it, but pretty cool lens. And before I wrapped up my shooting for the day, I took the lens on a little hike to put it through its paces in one of my favorite disciplines of photography, and that is landscape photography. I took it up to some of the overlooks in Pine Mountain State Park to see how the lens performed. And I'm gonna let you take a look at some of those images now. I took this first shot of the city overlook, and you can see the mountains kind of trailing off into the distance. Just a really nice shot. So I continued down the trail, and, and I knew this tree was here, but there is a tree on the trail. It's got this really interesting root formation here. It makes this nice curve. This was also an opportunity for me to test the ability of this lens to control flare. You can see that this was a backlit shot, and I do have a pretty undesirable flare, uh, lens flare right there. So um, that's something to take note of. When you are shooting backlit, this lens could give you some undesirable flaring results. Again, just heading down the trail, it was a really, really dreary day. But, but the rhododendron was blooming. That's something really cool. I'd never seen this before in all my years in Kentucky. A really beautiful plant. As we go on, I've got a few more shots of the rhododendron. Hope you guys are enjoying my C minus level biology expertise. <laughs> Another view of the trail here. You can see just the lens performing really well. Resolution all across the frame, leaving nothing to be desired on that front. Um, don't look now, guys, but the early returns are. The early returns are that I'm gonna have to take some backwater on my Zooms versus Proms uh, video. This lens is performing really well. Uh, more rhododendron blooms, just resolving every detail of those flowers. And some blackberries along the side of the trail that aren't quite ready to be picked yet. And I use this shot to mainly illustrate just how close you can focus. These are not those big genetically modified whopping, you know, grocery store blackberries. These are these are the little um, wild blackberries, and uh, you're really able to to focus closely. And the quality doesn't diminish either, as well. The performance remains high even when focusing closely. These shots here bring up an interesting story. If the city of Pineville is famous for one thing, it's from the notorious tourist trap slash state park situation um, known as Chained Rock. The legend goes that there is this tremendous rock up on top of a hill and just above the city of Pineville, the city we saw in the first shot of this series. And the residents of Pineville were worried that this rock was gonna fall off and smash the city. Um, so they had the broad idea that they would chain the rock. As you drive by on the highway, you can see the chain and the rock up there. It's a, it's a big spectacle. Unfortunately for the residents of Pineville, I don't think this chain's gonna do very much good and just a few few different shots of the of the chain and the rock. You can just imagine the calamity um, of that rock falling off onto the city. <laughs> and some, some more mountains here off looking off in the distance. And this is looking over into Tennessee and Virginia. Just a really cool overlook. And a really nice close-up shot of some moss growing on the side of a rock, so. And one last shot here of a rhododendron blue. Something else that's great about this shot is it gives you a chance to look at the bokeh. Um, perfectly round bokeh here. I was shooting this at 2.8. Really nice, pleasing bokeh. Doesn't look distracting. It's really, really pleasant. So guys, let's go over some of the specs of the Sony 24-70 2.8 version 2. So Sony advertises a couple of things, and I'll just read you their statement about the lens. They call it a refined take on the fast standard zoom. The Sony 24-70 2.8 GM is not only smaller and lighter than the previous generation, it also features a variety of optical focusing and handling upgrades catering to both photo and video applications that make this one of the most rounded G Master lenses to date. 
Um, they advertise it as being 22% smaller and 18% lighter than the previous generation. If you've watched this channel much at all, you'll know one of my biggest videos on the channel was a hot take kind of video that I did on the Sigma 24 to 72.8 lens. I just didn't like it, if I'm gonna be completely honest, and you can watch the video for more. But almost everything that I said about the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter lens has been remedied in this new Sony version of the lens. It's lighter and smaller, uh, much easier to use, and, and at least from what I'm seeing on my screen, the resolution is vastly improved. So getting into some of the specs of this lens, focal length of 24 to 70, minimum aperture of 2.8, and a maximum aperture of f22. And the f22 is pretty cool. As a landscape photographer, I can think of a couple of uses for that lens. Um, when you really want those long exposure shots and you don't wanna have to throw on an ND filter, the ability to throw it all the way down to F22 is a pretty cool thing. The minimum focusing distance on this lens, we already touched on, 8.3 inches, allows you to get really close to the subject. As someone who shoots a lot of weddings, um, for those detail shots of the rings, the flowers, lots of that kind of stuff, this lens is gonna be invaluable for the ability to get close and really blow that stuff up. A few notes on the optical construction and some of the coatings involved in this lens. This is a really complex optical design, 20 elements in 15 groups, and it has all of Sony's latest and greatest in terms of coatings and, and weird magical glass inside. It has their latest nano AR coating too. It's, it features some of Sony's latest extreme spherical lens designs along with additional ED elements. And you've already seen some of the benefits of this weird magical glass trickery that Sony's been using in terms of extreme spherical lens designs. You notice how we were getting that really good optical performance in the corner of this lens. It's no happy little accident that this lens performs so well in the corners. It's due in large part to those extreme spherical elements. The lens also features an 11 bladed aperture, which yields 22 point sun stars. The front element features a fluorine coating, which is notable because fingerprints don't stick to it. Without the lens hood, and I'm gonna take it off here, the lens measures 3.5 inches by 4.7 inches. So it is still a pretty darn big lens, but it doesn't feel as big and bulky as perhaps the size would have you to believe. The lens weighs 1.5 pounds or 695 grams. And as I was carrying around my Sigma 85 1.4 lens, I had a hard time telling what was heavier. Was my 85 heavier or was the new Sony 24 to 70 heavier? And after I got back home and looked them up, the, the Sigma 85 1.4 is only slightly lighter at 630 grams or 1.4 pounds. I think that was an important realization for me to have because I've carried that Sigma 85 1.4 with me everywhere and I never bat an eye taking that lens with me. I think that says something about how I'm gonna be able to carry the new Sony lens with me. Something else that's worth noting about the design is that the lens does extend. When you're at maximum zoom, the lens does get a little longer. I prefer an internal zooming design, but I do understand that this is a compromise that almost every manufacturer has to make when designing a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. I don't think they can make a lens that's internal focused, that, that covers that, that severe of a range from a moderately wide angle lens to a, to a medium telephoto lens. I think that almost all lens designs have to have. I'm no lens designer, but I haven't seen someone design a, a, a nice internal focus 24 to 70. The lens body itself has a number of features. Um, it has an iris lock on the aperture ring, which means you can lock the aperture in place. The lens also features an autofocus and manual focus switch. The lens also has two customizable focus hold buttons on the outside of the case as well. And perhaps the most, and perhaps the most sexual switch that I've ever seen, um, the smooth and the tight um, setting and I don't know what to make of either of those. So we're gonna, we'll figure that, we'll figure that out later. This lens operates just like a dream. The zoom ring is extremely smooth, the focusing ring is really smooth, and the aperture ring can be declicked for video. The lens is just absolutely perfect on the operation front. Really easy to use and does everything you'd want it to do and maybe more. Looking at some of the autofocus capabilities of the lens, you saw my vlogging video sample that I did earlier. I'll put it bluntly, this is the best autofocusing lens that I've ever used. I have mainly used primes to this point. The autofocusing is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. One feature that is lacking on the lens, and unfortunately this is the modern way, I used to be a Nikon shooter, and the first 24 to 72.8 lens that I ever owned was the Nikon 24 to 70 VR1. And 
I don't know why we've moved away from these lenses having vibration reduction or shake reduction. Most manufacturers aren't putting shake reduction inside of 24 to 70 lenses anymore, and that's just disappointing. Uh, one other thing to note about this lens is its tremendous filter size. Just like I said about the Sigma lens many months ago, these are big filters, big, big saucer plate filters that you that you need for this lens 82 millimeters in fact i will have to buy completely new filters just for this lens and then have to step them down to my other lenses but yeah 82 millimeter filters something to note uh, that seems to be the way that sony's going with the professional zoom range at this point the, the new 70 to 200 has 82 millimeter filters as well so at least that will be consistent let's talk some about the build quality of this lens um, there's not a ton to say here, except for that it's built like a G Master lens. So if you've used any of Sony's G Master lenses, this lens is built at least that good and maybe better. All the parts on this lens feel like they're very tight and very well put together. Very small gaps between the parts. The lens feels very, very nice and well put together. There's a lot of plastic in the construction, but it isn't cheap feeling plastic. Everything feels pretty good. You can, you can hear it's a nice, and there are still some metal components involved in the lens, so um, really nice build quality as well. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this lens. So I got the lens today, I've had it out shooting, and I have lots of good things to say about this lens. The early returns are that this might be the best 24 to 70 lens ever made. It's incredible, it's an absolutely incredible lens. You know the old cliche that it can replace a bag of proms. Well, this may be the lens to do that for me. I can envision a world where I go to a wedding and this is primarily the lens I use rather than running two body with a 24 millimeter and an 85 millimeter lens. I think going forward, I'll probably just use this. The sharpness of this lens was unexpectedly fantastic. Well, you've seen quite a few shots that I've posted from this lens and the resolution and the image quality on the whole are very, very good. Everything's fantastic on the image quality front. The autofocus performance is fantastic. Something else that's important to note about this lens is that it's weather sealed. Today was a pretty dreary day and it threatened to rain the entire time that I was out of the house. But I wasn't worried about it because this lens is weather sealed. Another really good thing about this lens is the build quality. This is a lens that you can buy and expect to use for many, many years. Uh, it just feels rock solid in the hand and as long as you take care of it even a little bit, um, the lens is gonna last you a really, really long time. So let's talk about some of the negatives of this lens. And I've kind of been hiding the ball with you guys a little bit here. The most negative thing about this lens is the price. Yep, we had to get here at some point. My receipt from B&H that came boxed up with my lens was for $2,435. I mean, this is a very, very expensive lens. And for anybody but a professional photographer, it's really hard to justify that price. So that is the biggest drawback of this lens is the cost. Comparing it to some of the other options that are available, namely that Sigma 24 to 72.8 lens, this lens is probably better than that by a pretty considerable margin, 20 to 30%. But this lens is also twice the price of that lens. So that's something you, you definitely need to figure into your calculation as you're figuring out whether or not to buy this lens or not. Um, there are much cheaper options available that are gonna yield pretty darn similar performance. Other negatives about this lens, um, there's no built-in stabilization. Of course, with all Sony bodies at this point, you're getting sensor shift stabilization, but we've seen in the past other manufacturers, and even Sony to some extent, achieve really good results with lens stabilization coupled with sensor shift stabilization. So I don't know why we've moved away from that. At least at this point, hardly anybody is producing 24 to 70 lenses with um, shake reduction. Another negative, and unfortunately this is just the price of doing business, is that big front filter. So what were my purposes for buying the lens? Well, most of my photography work is wedding photography and also wedding videography. And I envision this lens to be kind of a one-stop shop, do-it-all lens. I'm really happy with my purchase of the Sony 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Uh, I think it's a really exciting lens that's gonna be my go-to option for most shoots. And I'm really excited to shoot it with my Sony a7R 3 over the coming years. Check out this video about how the Sony a7R 3 represents an incredible value in the year 2022. But as always, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Just sitting here dreading editing this video. Good God. <clears throat>